Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, I will be constraining this pair of pliers using the assembly for workbench in FreeCAD. And this pair of pliers is a pair of very simple pliers I modeled a few videos ago. So if you want to know how we made these, go check that out. And so assembly four, you can tell if uh, you have this workbench installed, if it shows up in your workbench dropdown menu here, it should say assembly four. And I'll load that in real fast. But if you don't have that, you can come over here to Tools, Add-on Manager, and Assembly 4 right here. Uh, you just select that, click Install, and then Restart FreeCAD. So Assembly 4 is kind of the uh, the odd duck um, out of the uh, out of the three assembly workbenches. It's the most, I guess, different from a normal workflow uh, from like uh, SolidWorks or some other piece of uh, proprietary software. Um, so in assembly four, I will, uh, let's see, I'll grab a new file and you can come over here and create a new assembly container. And inside of this container, you've got parts, but most importantly, you've got the origins. Um, and the way that this, uh, I guess workbench works is I have an origin um, that's part of this assembly, and then I've got a part, right? And my part has, you know, an origin somewhere. And this workbench will essentially just line up these two things and, and display them lined up. Um, and that's basically all it does. Um, but this is obviously very powerful. So we'll get started here. So I'm going to take my original pair of pliers and split it out into uh, a second file so that I don't uh, mess up my original file. So we will call this pliers A4. And now that we've got that saved, I'm going to delete the handle and the grabber. And I will also close my, uh, I guess, second file. We'll close this, discard that. I'll save this. And then I'll start off by putting in my, I guess, my origins. So for the handle, I will, let's see, toggle this is the active part. And I'm actually gonna show the origin. So for the handle, um, one thing I need is I need the origin um, because that's going to be the, I guess, base part. And then for this handle over here on the other side, I need some place to connect it. And I'm going to choose this bit right here. Um, so I need an origin on this handle. And then that will also have an origin on the, uh, the other, I guess, copied version of this handle. So I'll go ahead and put both of those in. So let's see, got a handle here. You gotta select the handle and then you click this, uh, I guess, datum button. And I will call this origin. And I'm just gonna click okay with no no movements. It'll be a little bit mad about this. You see we got like a, the purple mushroom, meaning it's an like unconstrained datum but that's okay. I'm not super worried about that. Um, if, if you were doing this for real, I probably would constrain this datum in case, uh, in case something funky happens. But I know nothing funky is going to happen, you know, and I don't plan to use this uh, ever again. So I'm not super, super worried about that. So then we'll get ourselves a second datum and I will call this big pin. And I'm going to come over here and select this, uh, I guess, surface, this uh, angle. And I'm going to do this uh, concentric, I guess, constraint. And that should be good for that. OK. And I'm actually going to hide this handle. And I'll come back over to uh, the grabber. 
And for this grabber, let's see, what do I need? So I'll bring the handle back and I need an origin right here um, between both the handle and the grabber. So I shall come over, so I gotta put a, uh, an origin back on the handle first. So we'll do that real fast here. I'm gonna hide my grabbers so that I can actually select this circle. And I'll call this small pin. And do concentric, okay. Um, so that should be everything we need on the handle side. On the grabber side, I'm gonna come over here select the object and I'm going to call this small pin. I'll put my origin here and it'll be concentric. And for this, I'm not going to worry about the particular orientation of my, uh, of my data. Um, but if you were doing this for real, you might think about that a little bit more because it'll mean that you, you have less, I guess, work to do um, later because you can rotate uh, the two datums about one another, um, but if they just line up fine, then obviously that's preferred. Um, I guess if you don't understand what I'm talking about there, we'll, we'll see it in the future. So now we've got uh, all of my datums that I need. I'll rebuild and I'll bring them back. And then I'm gonna put in a, uh, an assembly and you see that uh, these two parts just get sucked straight into the assembly. Um, so whether you want that or not, they, uh, that's what happens, but that's okay. I guess they just get put into a folder and I actually don't want that. So I'm going to, uh, do the old controls here. I guess I'll just delete this assembly. Um, yes, delete the contents as well, delete the folder. Um, but I, I don't want to delete the contents and let us see what happened. Alrighty, so I'll save this. It looks like my uh, my mates on my handle got broken, so I will fix them real fast. Not quite sure what happened there. Okay, so this is big pen. We'll go there, concentric. Okay, and then small pin. Gotta hide my grabber to be able to select that face. And I shall select that face. Okay, now we're, we're back in business. And I will save that. And then I'm actually going to, I guess, move this over to another file, um, the assembly portion of this, because it seems like it works better um, like that. And that's the way it's intended to be used. So I will make a new file and I'm going to save this file as assembly. And I'm going to grab a link back to my original two components. Actually, I believe that uh, we don't even need to do that because um, the assembly workbench will do that for us. So I have my assembly here. Um, just click the button and there's this button here, insert link to a part. And I'm gonna grab the handle first and zoom out here so we can see it. And this is the first handle that we have. So I'll click the uh, okay on that. Oops, actually I gotta select the, uh, the origins that I want to uh, bond together. So now that that one's done, I'll do it once again and want the parent assembly here and the origin to this origin, but those are gonna end up right on top of one another. So I'm gonna rotate it around and let's see, it looks like it uh, needs to be moved up a little bit. So I'll go ahead and move that one up. Let's see which one of these buttons moves it up. And I went one too far. Okay, and then for the Last two components, I'll grab the grabber and I want to make to handle one and I want the small pin and I'll have to rotate this a little bit. 
And it's one of these buttons, I'm sure of it. Okay, and then we've got to move this one down a little bit. And let's see. Looks like we uh, we got some kind of funkiness going on here. Might be an issue with the uh, the old rotation. Mm, I might uh, I might start over. So if you I guess if you you know have a part in an assembly and you want to modify its uh, its mate, you can come down here, right click, come down here to assembly, and click Edit Placement of Part. And let's see, let's see. This part needs to end up like this. Um, if it were if it were be ma being mated to this side, it would need to end up like this. We are being mated to the other side, um, so we need to rotate like this. Okay, and I'm thinking my my mate for this grabber probably also got broken. Yeah, that's why it's so funky. Um, so I will fix that. Let's see, I need to come over here and hide my handle. Edit this guy down here. Do that. Okay, now we now we should be good to go. I'll uh, do the old rebuild. You can rebuild with the little, uh, I guess, Rubik's Cube symbol. And that's looking much better, much better. So I'll insert another part. And I want to do the second handle, small pin. And it looks like that one went in perfectly fine. Okay. So that is, I guess, how you mate these things together. I think I've got a, something is showing, this origin is showing. Um, so I'll hide that. And here you can see all of our, I guess, mated areas. And this is good if you, I guess, don't have any moving parts. Um, so this, this particular assembly I've made here while relatively simple, doesn't have the ability to move. Um, so I'll be doing a second one that uh, can move. And I'll uh, move on to that here. So I'm going to save this. And then I will, let's see. Yeah, I will close this document and I'll, I'll get a new document. But I'm going to save as, and this will be called assembly and I'll call it uh, animated. Um, and I call it that because Assembly 4 has a way to uh, export a animation of your workbench, or I guess your, your assembly moving, much like how um, if you were using, uh, let's see, SolidWorks or Fusion 360, or I'm sure Creo can do this, you can do a motion study of an assembly and then export a video or export a graph. Um, I think, um, I believe Assembly 3 also has a few ways to uh, export a graph, trace part move if you do that. And I don't know if A2 Plus has a way to do that, but uh, I'm sure, I'm sure um, somebody has something for that. Um, but we'll come back here. And the way we're going to do this particular section um, is I'm going to make a sketch and we'll call this, I don't know, master. And let's see, I'm actually going to cancel that and I'll delete this. I'll show my, my origin. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a sketch and then we'll make our origins um, or I guess, control frames to the sketch, and then we can edit the sketch. So we're basically piggybacking off the sketch. So I will come down here, come over to uh, Sketcher, create a new sketch. And I'm going to hide my origins now that I do have my sketch. 
And for this, um, I'm just going to draw out the kind of basic shape that you need. And uh, we'll, uh, I guess we'll figure out the distances later. So this here, I'll draw my, uh, I'll draw my, let's see, let me zoom out here and I'll actually draw, I guess, the pair of pliers over the top of this. So here's my, my big circle. Here's my kind of first leg, um, my second leg. And then this comes out here and breaks off like that kind of. And then this comes up like this circle here, then little grabber bit. And it looks like that. So this is from, I guess, the origin of, of this second leg when it's rotated over um, up through the center point um, because that's where it rotates from and that's how it connects to the second um, plier piece. And then we've got this bit here, which is actually this kind of straight up bit. And then uh, we'll put a little bit on the end of it that looks like this. I'm sure it'll make more sense as we go through it, um, but that's the plan. That's the plan. So these two things need to be parallel. And then I need a little bit like of a, a little jog over. And this will be a jog over to the uh, to the center of it. And I'll make these two perpendicular. And then I'll grab a second line from here, make this vertical, and I'll do a second jog over. And this one, sure, horizontal's fine. Um, these two need to be equal. These two down here need to be equal. And I'll get myself a line from here to there. And then these two lines need to be equal. And these two bits need to be coincident. This is the uh, rotation point. And then I need a, uh, a little bit more. So let me just, uh, let me swap over to the pliers and remind myself how this looks. So we've got here up to this point, I believe. Yeah, so here up to the rotation point, we've got a, a up and a jog over, and then I need another up and a jog back. So another up and a jog back, switch back over to this guy. So, and up and a jog back. Let's see, I'm sure I'm making a, uh, a large mistake here um, and we'll figure that out later. We'll do these two perpendicular and then this one and this one perpendicular. And let's see, I'll, I'll save this and uh, I'm gonna actually exit this sketch and I will open my original pliers document. And I'm actually going to grab myself a link to, uh, let's see, pliers. Oh, wow, it, uh, it grabs the correct link um, and down here, let's see, it is a bit small, um, but I need the distance, let's see, for the handle portion, I need the distance from the origin back here to the center of this, and I'm going to switch over to part design because the measure tool in part design is quite nice. So between here and here, I guess it does not like that do between this face and here. 
and we get a, let's see, an X translation of 78.77 millimeters. So I'll grab this guy, oops, over here, and the vertical length of this should be 78.77 millimeters. Quite tall, I guess, in comparison to the rest of my, uh, my sketch. I probably, I might as well start over. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll redo this bit. It feels like it's going to be a, a, a big pain to get it all sorted out up there. Um, not quite sure. This thing is tall. I'll delete this, delete that, and let's see. Actually, how about, how about I do this? How about I do this? I'll do this line. I'll do a vertical dimension here, 78 point, I forget exactly the number, 29, we'll do that. And then uh, now I'll put in my, my line from here to the bottom, make these two equal. I'll uh, grab an angle constraint here of 10. And then uh, let's close that and come over to pliers. That looks pretty good. Um, let's see, let's see. I guess we'll flip around to the bottom and we'll see. It's not quite going to the center. I guess this is measuring to, uh, to the outside. So let me take a, a gander um, at this pad sketch. See if we can get a uh, we can get a number off of this. Looks like we're looking for the 80 here, so it should be 80. Edit this sketch. This guy here should be 80. Alrighty. And then I need a. Let's see. I need an up and an over towards the outside, or I guess we could go in over and then in up. Um, although this is, this is the wrong side to go over. Let's see, having difficulty selecting that. Um, looks like we're getting some type of, uh, I guess, out of bounds thing. Um, yeah, maybe editing that from the other document wasn't the best idea. Righty. So I want something that looks like horizontal on the left and like this on the right. And we'll do these two are perpendicular and this one's horizontal, but they're both equal. And then I need to do a line like this that is perpendicular, and then a second line on the other side. Perpendicular. And I'll make these two things equal once again. And we'll hop over to the uh, to the original pliers. See if I can edit the sketch here, I'll uh, cut the face off of it. And for this one, let's see. I'm pretty sure I had some pretty round numbers in here, so I will uh, leave it like that and we'll hop over. I think I probably could edit the sketch, but it's having issues with the, the whole selecting thing. so. We'll, uh, we'll keep jumping back and forth. So here, a horizontal constraint of 1.5, I'm guessing that's supposed to be, and a vertical constraint of 18, probably. 
Alrighty, we'll hop back over to uh, the other pliers and edit this sketch. And we need a jog up and then a jog over. So I'll do a jog up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna split my face again, a jog over. And then on this guy here, I need a jog Let's see, it must be a jog like this and then a jog over like that. And these two bits here are, uh, let's see, it's having difficulties with the whole selecting thing again. Um, we'll get that one into about the right spot. And I'll switch back here. Okay, so this here, my guess is this is supposed to be 1.5, just like on the other side. And this vertical, let's see, probably supposed to be 10. Make these two equal, these two here equal, and those perpendicular. And then one last thing, this and that are supposed to be coincident. I must have made some kind of mistake because there's no way these are going to end up being coincident. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I see. So my, my mistake is this thing is always vertical here, whereas it should be kind of like this. Um, so we've got to get rid of our, our two lines here. And I'll put this in like this. We'll do perpendicular here. And I recall this one being 10 and this one here being 1.5. And then these two are equal. These two here are equal. And those two are coincident. And there we go. All righty. So now that we have this, we should be able to put in our planes. But first, I'm going to come over here and delete my sketch from uh, pliers file. And I'll switch back over to assembly four. And then in here, I will do a new control frame. And I will call this, we'll call this origin two. Okay, and I want it on this point with that line like this. And basically what I want is I want this frame here, um, but upside down. So I'll flip through these, see if we get any that are looking correct or didn't see any. Um, so we'll do the old rotations. So it looks like I need to do a minus 90 here to get the green sides lined up. And then I want uh, my blue pointed down. So I got to do a 180 here. And then I'm going to move this up four millimeters. Um, I think that's what we needed. So that's looking pretty good. And then out here, I'm going to grab another control frame and we will do, let's see, small, or we'll do right small pin. And I'll grab this point and that line. We'll do it like this. Okay. And one more. Let's see. We'll call this left small pin. So here, here, like this, um, I am going to rotate it so that it ends up upside down. Um, that is not the correct direction. See if this is the correct direction yet. So 180, great, 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 great. Okay. And at this point, we are good to put in our parts once again. Um, I'm actually going to close the... Uh, pliers files so we don't get ourselves confused. 
close document and I'll just discard that since we didn't make any meaningful changes. And I'll grab the handle again. And to start off with, we will insert to the parent assembly origin. Okay. And then uh, I'll insert the handle once more and I'll do the origin parent assembly. Um, but I actually want origin two and you can see it's lined up there correctly. Alrighty. And then another part, we'll do the grabber and we want the parent assembly, the right small pin here. You can see it's not oriented correctly, so we've got to fix that. And let's see, got to rotate this one. That's looking correct. We just got to move it up and should be good there. Once more, insert a grabber. All righty. And do parent assembly in the left small pin this time. And let's see, it looks like we got to flip it. And we're going to have to move this one up, or I guess down. And that's looking pretty good there. Okay, I'll save that. Um, but now that we've, uh, I guess, connected it to this sketch, um, we're all, I guess, movable. Um, so I can, uh, let's see, I can come over here and I can edit my sketch. And I could change this to, let's say, five degrees, right? And you see it updates and now it's it's closed together more. Um, but I don't wanna you know, have to go through and update this thing. So the assembly for Workbench actually comes with some variables. So I'm gonna make myself a new variable. Um, type float is okay, this will just be an angle and I will call it angle. Alrighty, and I'm gonna come over to my sketch and I'll edit my sketch and I'll come down here and we'll actually do a uh, an equation, and this equation is going to be variables dot angle. Alrighty, and now we should be able to come over here. See these uh, these two gears here. This allows you to edit that variable without uh, without I guess affecting anything um, too much. So I'll do angle here and let's just move it between zero and 10. So here we have it. Ooh, let's see, it looks like it got messed up there at uh, zero, probably some type of sketching failure, but let's see, we, uh, we can move it. Not sure what's going on there. I might leave it at, uh, at zero and see if I can hop into that sketch and fix whatever is uh, whatever's gone funky. So it looks like the uh, the old sketch is doing just fine. So it might be an issue with uh, the old grabber. So I will. Let's see, assembly edit placement. <laughs> Actually going to, uh, let's see, I'll have to, I'll have to think about what's happening here a little bit more um, before I commit to anything, but it, it appears that something is, is, I guess, messing up with the, uh, the sketch, or I guess the mating of some portions. Not quite sure. 
not quite sure what's going on. Um, it could totally be. I'm not. I'm not super confident on uh, on what that is. Let me edit this part here, and we'll see if we can rotate this like that. So that's how it's supposed to look. And this one, assembly edit, and. Let's see, that's also how that one is supposed to look. So I will come over here to uh, the variables and hmm, looks like it's all kinds of messed up. It might be a, uh, an issue with the naming. So you can see origin two here gets kind of messed up when we go back to zero. So it might be an issue with uh, these two points down here getting combined together. So in fact, I think that's probably likely the issue. So I can uh, edit this sketch. And let's see, let's see. How do I want to do this? I will I will make this here. Um, so I'm going to delete constraint five here. And actually, yeah, so I've got a line here. I'll delete that line. Um, no need for that line. And let's see what is movable. What is movable? I'm going to cut this so that I can actually see the model. And it appears that this bit here is movable. Um, okay. Yep. So that got rid of our angle. I'll put the uh, the angle back in. And this will be very. Going to click the the button. Variables. Dot. Angle. Okay, and uh, let's see what else is having troubles. So the length of this is having troubles. I'll just constrain that to be 80. Okay, and I believe that should fix our problem. We might have to remate um, these guys at the end here. So let me, let's see, let's see. So our right small pin and left small pin um, appear to be messed up. So we'll have to remake these guys this the, uh, because our topological naming on this sketch changed. So select in mode, we'll be selecting that guy and then this guy and Let's see, I don't know, we'll, we'll go with the first one because that's probably what I had before. Don't quite remember. And then uh, let's see, for this one, we'll delete this, delete that, go into the, uh, the select in mode. And I'll be coming down here and selecting this one. And then I'll be referencing that one. And we got to change to this guy. Okay. And then uh, we'll see if we can fix the mates on these guys. And looks like this guy just needs some rotating. That's looking pretty good. And this guy here just needs some rotating. Okay. And that's looking pretty fantastic also. So I'll save that, hide my sketch. We'll see if it's working any better now. So, yep, that was the, uh, that was the issue is our sketch getting combined together. Um, it also appears to have broken my other constraints. So I'll go fix that real fast.
that would have been origin two. You can see it's got the uh, the little purple mushroom here. So it means it's undefined. And I'll get rid of those two. I'll be uh, selecting a reference one. And I'm actually going to uh, move this so that I can actually see it. OK. And not end up like uh, selecting something funky. So we'll delete that, delete this, be selecting the point down here, and then selecting this line here. And I'll pick the first one. All righty. So we should be all good now. I should, I should hope. Oh, yep. And see, it's all moving there. So I think we could probably go a little bit lower on our negative side, maybe like negative five. Ooh, it's kind of merging together on the end there. So maybe this is about the, the farthest we can go. This is a uh, negative two, so maybe we'll limit ourselves at negative two. And then on the, uh, the opening side, we could probably go like 20. So pretty big, pretty, pretty small, maybe even like 40. Okay. So now that we have that, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hide my sketch. And if, uh, if this is all you wanted, you could probably stop here. Um, but I think you're probably wondering how you export a video from this. So before I export a video, I'm going to uh, come over here and hide my control frames for each one of these guys. Um, just cleans it up. And let's see, we still got a few here. So hide those. All righty. And then I'm going to align myself and zoom on in here. And I'll come over, I'll, uh, I'll rebuild real fast and I'll come over to the gears here. And let me just click a uh, pendulum that'll uh, take us back and forth. I'll click run and see it opening up. You want to make sure that this whole thing is in frame because we're basically just going to uh, take a series of photos of this happening. And I will export this. And we can see here on the left the video that's going to get exported. And I'm going to select the file to save this to. I'll call this uh, export example dot uh, mp4. And uh, I'll change the background to white because that looks kind of better. And let's see. For loops, I'll do two loops and smoothen. Um, maybe we'll do a smoothen of two. Not quite sure what that is. Uh, you can go look that up. And uh, let's see. For width and height, um, we could do 1920 by 1080. Let's see if it, uh, it takes that. And I want a preview scale of 100%. Um, maybe that'll make it fit on the screen. Maybe maybe we do a preview scale of 30%. Ah, much better, much better. OK, so now that we have this, I'm going to uh, do the Create and Save. And it'll go through and make this. And I'll jump back from uh, when it's done, and we'll take a look at the video. So here we have the uh, final video. And uh, I'll just play this, and uh, you can take a look at it.
But uh, this is going to be the end of the video. So I hope you learned something. And uh, if you if you are interested in the other free CAD assembly managers, um, feel free to uh, to take a look through some of the other videos I've made about them. Um, the assembly four is definitely like the most difficult to use just because it requires so much setup. But it is uh, it is kind of nice. You do define everything, so it's very unlikely that uh, something is going to break. So, yeah, have a nice day, and I'll uh, I'll end it here.